I'm here today with Kuhn Jacmans at the Royal Economic Society's annual meetings in Manchester, England. Professor Jacmans has just won the Sargon Prize in Econometrics, which is awarded to the best paper for someone within five years of coming out of grad school. It's, it's a pretty prestigious award. First, I think we'll start with, with a simpler question. What is econometrics and how does it differ from statistics? I think that econometrics is different in from statistics in the sense that we apply statistical methods to economic data and economic data is not experimental data. When economic agents make their decisions, they're optimizing some uh, utility function, they're making optimal behavior according to some economic theory. Yeah. Uh, and so we don't have control about that. And so in some sense, what we see is at least partly, uh, partly self-selected by agents. And so that makes you know, a random assignment, or random sampling type uh, assumptions that you would very often have in uh, statistical theory very complicated to deal with. So in a laboratory, you have what we call random controlled treatments, and the data that comes to us from history is just whatever it is, and often that randomization is not there. One of the solutions to that is to look for natural experiments out there in the world where somehow either governments behave in a certain way or nature behaves in a certain way that actually mimics the, these controlled treatments, the randomized controlled treatments. This is one way of doing it. It's not the only way of doing it. And it's a way that can be very powerful in some situations. It's also a way that can be very complicated to uh, implement in others because you don't want to put random assignment. You don't want to make people smoke uh, <laughs> That's uh, true. just to check if it's really bad for you. What Econometrics has also been using lately is you know, control function type approaches or even panel data. So when you have panel data, you see an individual at multiple time periods. And that allows a multitude of ways to control for unobserved characteristics mm -hmm. of these individuals. That is not a natural experiment, but that is an econometric technique that has been very, uh, very powerful and very, very popular in economic uh, practice. There's different branches of econometrics. There's micro, there's macro. Within each, there's lots of sub-disciplines. There's Bayesians, there's you know, classical economists. What, what type of econometrician are you? And so what I've worked on so far are things that all relate to somehow capturing or controlling for the unobserved heterogeneity that I just mentioned. Uh -huh. You know, when you work with microdata at the individual level, that's typically the problem that you would want to take uh, into account. And given that that's what I'm working on, I would say microeconometrician. One of the reasons you won your award was, one, that the paper's technically very complex and it has wide application. You know, what sub-disciplines or what kinds of questions in micro would this paper help us to answer? The motivation behind the paper is really thinking about a cross-sectional situation uh, where you want to control for endogeneity, or you have endogenous sample selection like in labor force participation, the one we just heard about, extensive intensive margins. You want to estimate your economic model from such data. We know very well how to do this type of stuff in linear models where we have two-stage uh, least squares and ha Heckman sample selection type issues. We don't have this off-the-shelf type methods for nonlinear models, and we very often have nonlinear models because we have, you know, in economics you have discrete choices, you have binary choices, you have, you have, uh, you have uh, patterns, or you have count data more generally. Those are interactions. So you have nonlinearity in a model, which is inherent, which is very interesting from a, the from a theoretical point of view, but it's very complicated to deal with. Uh, econometrically. So the paper says that you know, these type of situations, which you have in you know, labor economics, but you have them in international trade, you have them in almost all microeconometrics. So if you really wanted to say there's macro and micro, I think all, everything in micro would somehow uh, find application in that. Uh, so what it tries to do is it tries to come up with um, a general framework of uh, dealing with these types of issues and it builds on control functions. So control functions are basically functions of observables that allow you to control for unobserved heterogeneity and there are many identification results that use these types of control functions and then what the paper is doing is it gives you inference, so estimation and inference theory uh, for estimators with control functions based on pairwise comparisons. And pairwise comparisons are essentially do it for a cross-section what you would do with fixed effects in a panel data model. Okay. Because what you would do in a fixed effect, you know, in the linear case, is you would take first differences, get rid of time constant uh, uh, heterogeneity, and then you would just, you know, do, do, do the standard thing. What you do with pairwise comparisons, you do, is you do the same thing. You look at individuals in the cross-section, and you compare each individual with all the other ones. With all this technique, with all this technical apparatus we have as econometricians, why doesn't data do a better job within economics of sorting between competing models? We are building increasingly more complex economic models which follow from theory and we want to fit all kinds of moments to the data and we want to control for all, all kinds of unobserved uh, factors and that's really demanding a lot from the data. What you might end up with is a situation where it's very, very complicated 
to actually let the data speak. Or it might be very complicated for the data to inform you in a, in a significant manner on which model is the best one. Uh, this would be weak identification or this would just be big standard errors. A lot of young faculty, a lot of graduate students read my blog, what's the key to success? What kinds of things should they be thinking about? What I try to do is I don't try to write the most technically complex paper because that is not necessarily an interesting thing to do for an econometrician, but more uh, I try to write a paper that, 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 that solves a, a, an empirical problem. I was told, don't take technique in search of a question. Find the good question first and then develop the technique. And, and if the technique is simpler, if it's simple, Even it's better. simple, but it's the questions you're asking that in the end are going to make the difference. And macro Bayesian techniques are really taking over. Mm -hmm. um, classical techniques are hardly used at all on the frontier. Is that happening in, in the micro area as well? Is classical econometrics being crowded out by the Bayesians? In micro, there is a lot of uh, random assignment and treatment effects, as you mentioned before. There are also lots of structural models, like the one we just saw in, in Michael Keane's presentation. At least from my reading of the literature, I think it's predominantly still frequentist. Okay. But uh, that doesn't mean that Bayesian techniques can't be useful, because there are very nice papers that use Bayesian techniques in, an, in a frequentist setting as a computational tool and those papers are, uh, are, are extremely interesting and basically bring Bayesian techniques to the attention of, of, of frequentists, which is a good thing. Where are you headed next? What kinds of questions are, are you looking forward to answering in, in the future? There are still many ways of, you know, many modeling frameworks that are, that are unexplored that might be very beneficial for applied work. So I think, you know, we have to think about good ways of modeling and then about good techniques to, to, to estimate the model. Well, thank you for talking to us, to us today. You. This was great. Thanks.